Hello, welcome to my blog. Today I'll be uncovering the physics behind hammer throwing. Before we get into hammer throwing, first we need to understand what circular motion is. As you can see, we experience circular motion on a daily basis, from a rotating arms of a clock to a car making a U-turn. We see that circular motion, like many other things, involves forces. So, when it comes to forces, who better to turn to than Sir Isaac Newton? Isaac Newton was probably the greatest contributor to mathematics and physics through his three laws of motion, among other things. Uniform circular motion involves an object moving at constant speed and radius. This means the object can increase the magnitude of the radius or velocity or else it would no longer be uniform circular motion. As you can see, circular motion can occur in three different situations. First, on a surface like the cars in the first image. Second, in the air like the Viking Slinger. Or in space, like the moon orbiting the Earth. On top of the above situation, circular motion can also occur in a horizontal or vertical circle either clockwise or counterclockwise. However, no matter what the circular motion in is, in general, circular motion always changes direction, which means that all objects undergoing circular motion is actually accelerating. Thus, there must be a force acting on it. To understand all this, we can turn to the diagram below, which shows an object undergoing uniform circular motion. Here, we can see that even though the velocity is same throughout, the direction is continuously changing. For example, when we look at vector 1 or v1, it's pointing east, and when we look at vector 2, it's pointing south. To find out how vector 1 turned into vector 2, we can find the delta v of the two vectors using triangles as shown. When we look further into this, we can see that when v1 approaches v2, the change in v becomes closer and closer to pointing towards the center of the circle. So it can be concluded that the instantaneous change in velocity or when one vector approaches another is always towards the center. Now that we know that the instantaneous change in velocity is always towards the center, we can safely assume that acceleration is also directed towards the center. If we were to analyze radius as well, we can simplify this equation into centripetal acceleration, which means directed towards the center, is velocity squared over radius. Since we know acceleration, we can finally apply circular motion to Newton's laws, namely the second law, which states net force is equal to the mass times acceleration. So when it comes to circular motion, this turns into mass times velocity squared over radius. Now that we understand what circular motion is, we can finally get into hammer throwing. Even though a lot of people are unaware of it, hammer throwing is a world-renowned sport. As you saw in the video, it actually has its own event in the Olympics. But this wasn't always the case. Hammer throwing was actually born in Scotland, where people threw sledgehammers as far as they could to showcase their strength. But modern day hammer throwing doesn't involve an actual hammer but rather a 7 kilogram ball and a rope that's roughly 1.2 meters long. And most importantly, hammer throwing had actually evolved from a test of brute strength to a technique that depends heavily on the mechanics of circular motion. Support from a knowledgeable crowd who love hammer throwing. There's the series for Primos Cosmos. Last throw for the Olympic champion in the hammer. World champion as well, for sure. Has it gone better? It's gone high and handsome. Yes, it has. Even further beyond 80 meters. Cosmos. This shows the forces acting on the ball as it is about to be released by Cosmos, which indicates the only force acting on the ball is the force tension in the rope. And since centripetal force is actually a net force, we can say that force tension in the rope is actually equal to the force centripetal. But hold everything, I'm sure that you felt something is off. If the only force acting on the ball is towards the center,
How can it fly off when Cosmos releases it? To answer this, we need to look into the Newton's third law, which states that every force has an equal opposing force acting on it. Like in the picture, as the man pushes the wall, the wall pushes back at the man. This is why neither the wall nor the man accelerates. In this case, the opposing force, the centripetal force, is called the centrifugal force. The centrifugal force can be explained through Newton's first law, which states that the objects tend to remain in constant velocity and a force is required for an object to change direction or accelerate. This is the force centripetal in this case, but the object doesn't accelerate to the center and crash. The reason behind this is the centrifugal force that pulls the object back and keeps it moving in a circle. This explains why the ball accelerated away from Kuzmos as he released it. At this exact moment, the centrifugal force took precedence over the centripetal force. So the ball and the rope was able to fly off at a tangent away from Cosmos. This is all the free learning you're going to get today, folks. Be sure to catch the hammer throwing event in the upcoming Olympics. Enjoy the game I've uploaded. This is Oculus, signing off.